You know, I appreciate so much what Brother Kendall shared this morning. I believe it is true because all the practical knowledge that we might have does not make any difference if we're not willing to apply it at home. So my heart is with you, brother. I agree. That's where the real battle is at. Our home, our children. We need to apply it first to ourselves before we share it with others. I'm going to be talking about nutrition today. That's, uh, if you look at those pillars that are there, you see that it's the third pillar. And these are um, pillars that are based on God's words. You notice that at the bottom there? Because none of the expertise that we have, none of the information that we have will make any sense unless we're taking the information from the Maker, the one who put us together, the one who knows for us better. So as we go through this, I'm going to review some of the information that is here. I know that you know some of these things. But we hope that as we look at it together, we can make it in a practical way. We're going to have a demonstration here that I think you will find interesting. And it hopefully drives a message home as we go through. Those of you who are aware of myself, you know that uh, the Lord has given me the opportunity to serve and to learn about natural remedies. And I love sharing that with others. There is, uh, this is a shorter version of a longer presentation, but uh, before this, I kind of give you an overview of all the different inventions that we have today that we take from nature. Uh, for instance, do you know that Velcro was mimicked after nature? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you know that the fastest train to uh, today in the world uh, is shaped after the head of one of the birds that we have? And so all of this different engineering was already done by the master creator, and we're just kind of mimicking these things. And could it be that the God of heaven, when he created us, he had a certain food for us in mind, a certain way for us to uh, you know, be able to partake of these things that will be a blessing to us? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to run through this. You can see that God gave us the fruits and the grains. You find that in Genesis 1, 29 and 30. After men's disobedience, God added the vegetables for us to eat, and you find that in Genesis 3, 18. We're also, we're given water to drink. What, what was God's drink? Water. Water. It was not soda, it was not 7-Up, it was not Gatorade, it was not anything else. It was not apple juice. It was water. Have you found a tree that makes apple juice? No. You have to process it to be able to do that. Now, apple juice has its use. But the drink of choice that God gave us was, and is, water. And so God, when He created what is best for us for nutrition, let us know what is best for us. What you have on the right is a chart of man's lifespan right before something happened. You see a quick decline on the right, and you see a level of expectancy. This is what is called a spotted... Uh, spatial uh, graph, and you see all the dots represent men. This is your medium. This is an event, and this is the decline. You can see the curvature following the different dots which represent people. What do you think this event is? Flood. It says it there. It's the flood. What was the difference before and after the flood? Oxygen changed. Truly, we, we hypothesize about that. We don't have proof, but we think it did change because there was water above and water underneath, and we think that the atmosphere changed. But beyond that, what is a tangible thing that we know that did change? Meat eating. That is correct. Meat eating was introduced. And what happened to life expectancy after meat eating was introduced? <clears throat> did it decrease or increase? Decrease. Okay, how many PhDs you need to understand this graph? <laughs> Not a whole lot. I think I get it. And I'm a simple-minded man. Very simple, straightforward. God is trying to send a message. He limits life to 120 years in comparison to 900 years plus. The reason is because unlike lions, we don't have the acidic structure in our stomachs to be able to dissolve the meat. So you know what happens? It putrefies. And it putrefies across 72 hours into your small intestine before it moves into your large intestine. And you know what happens there? It putrefies further. 
And after that, you begin to have a large intestine that is packed. The large intestine is there to absorb water back and hold the feces before they are excreted from the body. But when we partake of these meats and these meals and these things that are not designed by the original intent of it, we quickly find that our life expectancy comes down. Well, Pedro, what am I going to do if I can't have my protein? If I don't eat meat, if I don't, you know, uh, eat my eggs, where am I going to have my protein? This is a very interesting question. Did you know that there are two plant sources that have 100% your proteins? You know that proteins are made of amino acids. And some are called essential and some are called non-essential. The non-essentials are made by the body. The essentials must be ingested or taken. And there is one, or I'm sorry, two plants that have your complete proteins. You know what those are? Quinoas. What is it? Quinoas. Quinoa is one of them. That is correct. What's the other one? Almonds. Not potatoes, not almonds. What is it? Soybeans. Soybeans. Soybeans and quinoa have all of your all of your complete protein. If you were to take a meal with rice and bean, you still get your complete protein. Because the bean have a portion and the rice has another. When you combine the two, you get it. But quinoa and soybean have all the proteins that you need. God created them. Did you know that your body makes a certain percentage of cholesterol, which most likely you get from eating, for instance, eggs. What percentage does your body make of your cholesterol? Is it 50%, 60%, or 10%? Which one do you think it is? 10%. 10%? How many think that it's 60% that your body makes of your cholesterol? Nobody. No takers. <laughs> Somebody said 10. How about how many of you think there's 60% that you might, your body makes of cholesterol? Anybody? Well, since you're emphasizing this, I'm like, I will say 60. 60 maybe? <laughs> 60? Your body makes 100% oh, wow. of all your cholesterol. Wow. Therefore, any cholesterol that you introduce in your body will harden your blood vessels and will accumulate and ultimately cause clonage and become a heart attack in the future. That's what happens when you eat eggs. Because your body makes 100% of what you need. There is no need of taking extra cholesterol. Now, is there a particular situation and, and, and place for uh, eating eggs, for instance, mixed with, um, with grape juice? Yes, there is, as medicine when it's needed but not as your regular ingest. So just to give you some things, the world knows that what we eat is making us sick. This is not me, this is the world. These are very um, prominent institutions and their articles letting us know that what we eat is making us sick and the solution does not require a mathematician is simply going back to God's plan. As you look at these things, as I've been studying, I come out with a simple concept, it's called the ABC of nutrition. Acknowledge who packaged it, be ready to practice traffic light eating, and continue to follow the order. I'm going to demonstrate this in a very practical way, but at first I want to take you to the story of an apple. The apple grows on a tree, and who created the apple? God did it. And so when you grab the apple from the tree, who packaged that apple? God did. And you take it from God and you eat it? You're taking it straight from the package that got created into your body. That's the best way. We call that the green category. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you take the same apple and you now juice it, what happened to the apple? It was processed. What did we remove when we juice it? What did we remove? The fiber. What is the job of the fiber when it's introduced into the body? Why did God put the fiber there in the beginning? It's like a broom that cleans your clothes. That is one use of fiber, absolutely. And the things like uh, oranges and uh, things like uh, grapefruit are excellent for that, for cleaning out your intestines. But that's not the whole purpose or the main purpose of fiber. Probiotics. Probiotics. 
Very good point. Probiotics because our intestinal bacteria needs food to grow and break down the things that are there. But that is not the main point of fiber. Yes, ma'am. Could it be that um, it slows down the, um, the amount of sugar that we take in? I mean, I don't know if I'm explaining Absolutely, it. you are correct. The main point of fiber that God intended that we understand so far is that you do not get the sugar rush. See, what happens when you drink Red Bull, caffeine, or any of these substances, you get a rise immediately of glucose into your bloodstream. But as soon as you get the rise of glucose, somebody follows up, and that is, what I, that is who? Insulin. Because you have too much, blue, uh, too much glucose in your blood. As insulin rises, the body needs to now stabilize the sugar, which it did by the insulin, but now you have a surge of insulin, so it needs something else to stabilize that. What is that? Calcium. And where does that come from? From your bones. Therefore, osteosporosis, which is largely seen later on in life, is simply the result of you abusing this cycle over and over and over <coughs> again. But when you eat the fruit with the fiber, the fiber needs to be broken down into your small intestines so that the sugar can be released. That is why the apple juice does not make the same function as the apple. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And the apple juice will give you the same sugar high that you get from Gatorade, <coughs> from Coca-Cola. No difference. Now, there are certain cases for, for drinking, for instance, apple juice or green apples if you're having, for instance, uh, uh, kidney stones. You need to take a liter of that together with your water to be able to take care of it. But the point there is that you're going to later on make sure you have enough fiber to soak that up and enough exercises to burn it up so that you're not following that sugar right. Does that make sense? If you take the same apple, and that's what we call, by the way, the yellow category. If you look at this traffic light, if you take the same apple, you make apple pie. What do you have now? Processed. You have highly processed food, and that's what we call the red category. And in that category, we are going to be very careful and not introduce anything in our lives. So I need two volunteers. I don't have a lot of time, so it's got to be people who are able to follow instructions and follow them quickly. So I need two volunteers up here with me, and we're going to feed Joe. Okay? So come over and come over quickly, whoever you are. Two volunteers. So come over, and I will help you. And if you have some kids that want to help as well, that will be fine. They can help maybe one of the volunteers, but I need someone who can follow direction, perhaps someone that has some strength in them, because we're going to do some things that are needed here. So I need two of them, and I need them quickly up here. And when you come, please stand on this side, and I'm going to show you what you need to do. All right, so we have the kids. I need someone to also help the kids. Okay? Oh, I think Kendra has been... Uh, <laughs> I need two of them. I need two of them. So for the gentlemen, please put your gloves on. You're going to need those. And the kids are going to help with this as well. So please go ahead and put your gloves on. If you were to put two fists together, that will make the approximate volume of one liter. This is the size of your stomach. Um, I can show you the research right behind it. Okay? Approximately, this is the size of your stomach. All right, so you're, this two gentlemen here, plus this kids, they're very hungry. They haven't eaten, let me exaggerate, maybe in a week. And so they're very hungry. All right, they don't have a whole lot of time for chewing, but they're going to try. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to feed Joe, Joe's stomach. And we're going to have two choices of food for Joe to feed on. All right, this is his stomach. We're going to fill it in. Now, these guys here are going to help me, and they're going to be more of uh, the pre-processors and helping each one. So now you two choose who you're going to work with here. Okay, very good. And you two take one each one side. All right. Uh, and I thought there was a knife. Yes, there is a knife here. So this side here is going to feed on the apple. Okay, and it's going to feed on the bananas. And we're going to feed Joe. This is Joe's stomach. And this side over here is going to feed on chips. That's all they have to eat. And you're familiar with these chips because uh, you see them in a lot of Adventist potlucks. Uh, and I hope you're not familiar with this ones. But if you are, you should repent. Uh, 
very unhealthy. Okay? But this jaw over here is going to eat chips. And this jaw over here is going to eat fruits. And their hands are going to be the mouth. That's all they have to chew. The knife is going to help because obviously you can't tear apart that stuff. And I'm going to give you both 40 seconds to feed Joe. When I say start, I need a stopwatch, please. I got a stopwatch. You have a stopwatch? All right, you put it on, but you're going to need help as well to do the timing. So if anybody else has a stopwatch that you can help me with? All righty. Stopwatch anywhere? I have a stopwatch. You have it, ma'am? Okay, very good. Can you put 40 seconds and let me know when you're ready to go? Be careful with the knife and you guys, but just try to feed Joe as much as you can. You ready? Yeah. Okay, go. <laughs> well, we're going to try to feed Joe as much as we can in there. And try to chew as much as you can with your hands because that's all you got. Chew it up. Chew it up. Yeah, chew it up and try to get it in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, just, 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 Joe's still hungry, so give him some food, there you go. Okay, we're going to try that and, and try to get in there as much as we can. Come on, come on, give, give some food to Joe, give some food to Joe, there you go. How is that time coming? Time's up, let's give him some, some, some grace because Joe is still very hungry. <laughs> Let's give him 20 seconds more, please. Let's see how much we can get in there. Okay. Well, I think... Okay. Mine. We're going to... Well, that, that's been a frenzy for Joe here. Uh, he has been feeding. All right, very good. We, we got it there. Thank you. The gentlemen have done a great job for all of these guys. Now, I want you to notice something. And I want you to notice this. In this particular bag, which is fairly already empty, okay? Joe over here, which you can, if you can raise that so you can see his stomach, you can see it's fairly full. I, I, I venture to say that if you press that, you will be able to even get a little bit more, maybe not. All right, so how many, who has a calculator out there? Let's, let's analyze how much our friend Joe here was able to eat in a minute. 40 seconds plus 20 seconds of grace. So if you can multiply 13 times 150. Calories. 1,950. 1,950 calories that my friend was able to eat in a minute or less. That is the equivalent of a male, 150 pounds, entire calorie intake for one day. Okay? That is his overall calorie intake. What do you think will happen to my friend Joe as he continues his tradition? He will not last very long. Because as he continues to intake more that comes out, he will increase in weight, and therefore later on, disease will settle in. Now it's interesting because you notice that this gentleman here, they were doing a marvelous job. They were trying very hard. But you see that they couldn't quite fill the jar. If some of you who has gloves, if you can try to press that further in there, if you don't mind. I want you to see something very, very interesting of what's happening there. Okay, very good. I appreciate that. Thank you. He still has some room. But you know how many calories he had here? In that maybe, how many apples were you able to put in there? One. One. And a banana. And a banana. He has less than maybe two to three hundred calories. Maximum. And you know what's going to happen to my friend over here? Immediately, he is going to have a surge of glucose. Why? Because these are made out of simple carbohydrates, which are going to be broken down quickly into the bloodstream, and it's going to raise your blood sugar. These here are made out of complex carbohydrates that need to be broken down further in your small intestine, and it's going to give you a sustained 
supply of sugar. Okay, thank you gentlemen. I really appreciate it. Thank you young man for helping me there. That was a real blessing. So what is the point of the exercise? We must make wise choices in what we eat. And understand that this is the size of our stomach. And what you put in it has a limit. By the way, if you take a meal that is largely composed of water, whether it's a watery soup or you drink your water with your meal, your stomach will be full pretty fast, don't you think? And then you know what's going to happen? You're going to have to stretch that stomach to put more food in it. The food, the water, first needs to be processed. It will be absorbed into the beginning part of the small intestine, which is called the duodenum. And then the food will be left in your stomach to be processed. But since you fill your stomach with water, what is left is not much food at all. Therefore, it's important for us to take meals that are hearty. And that's why the servant of God, through the inspiration of God, has told us to please not drink our water with our meals. But drink it before or after. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay. So I kind of went through this. You understand. Uh, we kind of went through that part there. <clears throat> there is your stomach. And that's the overall size uh, of it. Uh, your stomach can enlarge four times its normal capacity and still not erupt. There are people who come and have an operation to make their stomach smaller. And you know what happens within a couple of months? It's a large sprout back up again to where it was. Because you're not dealing with the root cause, you're trying to force yourself to do something that God can give you the power to do. Okay? <clears throat> Traffic like eating, what is that? It's a simple method that uh, Dr. Sears uh, introduced. I had my uh, health coach training there. Then I went on to do my Master Herbalist in ACH. But here, you, he categorizes food in three categories. Do you know that Dr. Sears, a pediatrician for more than 50 years, his desire was to have young people perform well in school. And he noticed that their patients, bar to none, will perform terrible in school because these young kids were lacking one thing. You know what it was? Breakfast. They didn't have a strong breakfast. And so he introduced a strong breakfast. As a matter of fact, he went on to create what is called the Dr. Sears School Aid Smoothie. Amazing results. It's something that I use with my clients because it's a full meal, well-balanced, in a meal that you prepare in the morning and it, that gives you 64 ounces, you break it down into two 32 ounces portions. You have a strong meal in the morning, a strong meal at lunch. If you look at the composition of it, the foods that came from God's hand, those are in the green category. That's who packaged it. God did. And you cannot do better than that. After that, we have meals or food categories that have to be lightly processed. So as much as you like beans and rice, you cannot eat it raw. You have to process it. And that is okay. But that becomes part of the yellow. Now, when you see traffic like and you see green, what does that mean? Go. When you see yellow, what does that tell you? Slow down. When you see red, what does that tell you? Stop. That's exactly what God is trying to say. Please don't eat those, those things that have been highly processed in a way that I never intended for you. You know why? Because I love you. Amen. Most of the ladies here, the first 12 ladies that arrived, received a red rose. I want you to take a look at it for a moment, please. Now, throughout the years in my own marriage, um, I recognized that, and I heard it a lot, that over time, your love for your spouse kind of blends into a routine. And I, I said to myself, that should not be the case for me because that's not the case for God. I, we should be continuing to do this. And so to this day, I still open the door for my wife and she waits for it, for me to open the door for her. She's, she's been spoiled. Um, and I also endeavor to give her flowers. Now, I brought a flower for you here because I want you to realize something. I want you to look at that rose for a moment. And I want you to notice the beautiful petals, how they're wind together close. Your health 
is like that rose. That's right. It's a beautiful gift that God's given you. Mm -hmm. I deal every week with people who are dealing with cancer. Mm -hmm. People who are dealing with intense pain with fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. HPV. People who, who wish sometimes that the Lord was put them to rest. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes don't understand the blessing we have by just simply being able to be alive. Amen. Don't underestimate the gift that God gives you of health every day. Amen. And my encouragement and advice to you is to do everything within your power to sustain and uphold the beautiful health that God's giving you. Amen. In whatever state it is. Because I tell you, it could be worse. If you see that rose and you do not put it in water when you go back home, it will wither and die. Mm -hmm. So likewise, if we don't take care of our health by our choices connected with the Lord, we will wither and die. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's a quick reminder that God loves us. God is the creator of beauty. He said that if I have created that beautiful rose and sustained it, I can take care of you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay, very good. Let's look at the next here. This is another uh, another illustration that I do. I don't have enough time for this one. But I do want you to notice this. Um, when I prepare my morning breakfast, well, before that, I'll give you a story. How many of you know the Walla Walla area? Yeah, right? Most people. There are a lot of Adventists in Walla Walla. And there are a lot of people who are very uh, wise in that area. The Lord has given him many years to live. And so we were talking to another friend and said, uh, well, you know, so-and-so just turned 102 and he went to renew his driver's license. Mm -hmm. And my wife was surprised about that and she said, what in the world is so-and-so doing? That he just turned 102 and he's renewing his driver's license. <laughs> well, <clears throat> she said something very interesting. He prepares a bowl of fruit and oatmeal every morning. And I kind of laugh at that because in my home, my wife gets on my case sometimes to my children because I eat a bowl of food and oatmeal every morning. <laughs> but there is an order in which I create my bowl of food and oatmeal. So I want you to look at this picture here. When you look at the overall, I put my fruits first. The things that God created. And I try to fill my bowl. And then I put a little layer of oatmeal and then I put a little uh, bit of nuts or uh, granola and then I eat it slowly. Practice what I call uh, hands-free chewing. I can show you how to do it. It's so simple. You take a spoon bite and you let go of everything in your hands. Do you know that there is a psychological response in your brain when you are preparing the next bite and you will certainly overeat? You do not enjoy your meal and more importantly, you do not chew your food. Did you know that your stomach does not have teeth? <laughs> it can't chew the food for you. There are certain enzymes that are only segregated in your salivary glands that are needed for the breakdown of the food. If you do not chew your food properly, the servant of the Lord tells us that you should do one thing. Do you know what that is? What is that? Just keep the meal. That's what God says. If you do not have enough time to chew your, your meal, please skip it. Because you're not going to get any nutrients from it. Very important to chew our meal. So when I create my bowl, I put it there. And it takes me most of the time to chew. See, this I can gobble down in, I don't know, probably two to three minutes. Maybe. This, I'm going to choke. If I try to do the same. I'm going to have to choose some of it, right? The important part is to understand your stomach is a muscle. And when it gets there, it, it basically turns the food over. It mixes with the high chloric acid. And it mixes it and it mixes it and it mixes it. And you literally have, in the diodendum, cells that go like this. Hey, Mr. Stomach, is the food ready? And the stomach is like, yep, I'm tired of processing the stuff, so go get it. And the food, the, the cells go like, okay, let me check. Oh, no, that's not sufficiently processed, so you need to keep on doing your work. 
And so the diadendum will not let it pass until it is sufficiently emulsified. You know what happens when your stomach gets tired? Over working and working. Have you, have you heard the little story of the little servant by Eric Hare? Have you heard that before? Oh, I'm sure you have. Uh, I'm sure you listened to it before. The little maid. Every time that she was about to finish doing the butter, there came the mother-in-law. And what did she do? She poured more milk into that mix. And you know what happens when you do that? You have to start all over again. And you know that's what happens to your stomachs. When it gets tired, then you're going to do the crying. And you're going to be sick because your stomach has literally given up. It's a muscle. And you have worked it to exhaustion. It's important that we take care of this. And these are very simple things that God blesses. So when you put those foods that God created first, whether it's your fruits or your vegetables in their separate meals, they are not to be combined together, then the Lord can bless you so you can have ultimate nutrition. Yeah. It is better for you to chew your food peacefully, quietly, and at peace with the Lord than for you to eat hastily. I have a lot of nurses that say, Pedro, I just don't have the time. And I said, I understand, no problem. So immediately, I put them on the Dr. Sears School Day Rite Aid, uh, Rite Aid Smoothie. And as they do this, they're able to take their meal, because it's pre-chewed by the blender, right? <laughs> it's pre-chewed by the blender there. And so they're able to take their meal rather quickly, but still have a satisfying meal that they can take at peace. Okay, so if you're a nurse, I know you have at least 15 to 20 minutes max when you can get them. And so at least you can get your meal and get it there and be blessed. So please eat your meal uh, with peace and so you can have good nutrition because that's what God wants. Remember the red rose. God has given you that gift. Don't squander it. Amen. All right, very good. Um, I already, I already kind of went through this and so we're just going to go through the next part here. <coughs> In India, India's university, they hear Sam is saying, that says an onla a day keeps the doctor away. Mm -hmm. What's the equivalent of that in U.S.? Apple. Apple. An apple. A day keeps, keeps the doctor the away. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because God has amazing properties in the apple for you. Mm -hmm. That's why God wants you to eat those fruits and those vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's not just for the kids, it's for us as well. So if you go home and you are tempted to just munch on this rather than to munch on this, this is God's fast food. Right yeah. yeah. here. You can't get any faster than this. Okay? I have particular clients who are diabetics. If you're hypoglycemic, the best natural remedy that you can take is a ripe banana eaten very slowly. And it will take it right up. Okay? If you're hyperglycemic, that is your sugar is too high, you know the best remedy for you is to get on the treadmill for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And your sugar will come right down. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say to you is that these things are God's intended way for you to, you know, to have fuel in your body. Literally what you eat becomes part of who you are. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, I have a question. So where's that purple uh, looking thing in that bottle? That's that purple looking thing. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what it is, but we can we can explore it later. This is amla. Um, it is the Indian gooseberry, amazing fruit. Uh, very, very good for you. The important things, friends, is please follow the order. If you serve yourself the things that God has created first, and those things in the yellow category later, you will find yourself energized and full of blessing. Okay? As you'll be able to move forward. Uh, by the way, for ladies who sometimes have this phenomenon that, you know, you see your weight increasing and you want to watch your weight, but then you don't want to eat enough because, and then you feel terrible because you didn't eat enough and et cetera, et cetera. There is something that you can do to understand if you have eaten enough. If you weigh yourself before your meal, okay, and you serve your food, and you eat your food at peace with God, and you wait yourself 20 minutes into your meal, when you have risen, when your body weight has risen one and a half pounds, you have eaten enough. If your body weight has not risen one and a half pounds, then you're still not eating enough. And this is something that I find with a lot of females, 
is that they starve themselves. And that is not good for you. That is not God's plan. God's plan is that we will incorporate exercise together with a nutritionist diet that you may have a vibrant life. <clears throat> the Lord tells us in John 10, 10 that I have come that you might have what? Life. Life and have it more what? Abundantly. So please make sure you eat adequately and that you do not for yourself. Okay? All right, very good. So as I said before, a knowledge to package it, you want to have that green category first. Okay, whether it's the fruits or the vegetables and the separate meals, the things that God has packaged and created, and it's amazing what God can do there for you. Be ready to practice traffic light eating in a sense of making sure that you keep how much percentage of the red category? Zero. Zero. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, well, Pedro, you know, I, I want to be balanced, they tell me. I want to have some of the bad and some of the good, because if you eat all of the good, that's not balanced, Pedro. <laughs> you know, I mean, I said, yeah, well, that comes from Eastern religion. The concept of the yin and the yang. It's a, it's a circle composed of two sides. The sides are not straight, they're wavy. And the black part has a white dot in it. And the white part has a black dot in it. And do you, they will tell you very quickly that if you were to eat vegetables or fruits only with grains and stuff, that is too much yin. You must have some yang in a minute. You have must have some bad in it. So we're going to introduce meat to counteract that and be the bad part of it. But that is not after God's order. Mm -hmm. The definition of nutrition according to God's order and temperance is the complete abstinence of those things that are harmful. And the proper use of those things are helpful. Oh, right? So if you look at it that way, there was a show in Chicago, the area that I'm from, where uh, they said, whoever drinks the most amount of water will give them free tickets to a cruise. Mm -hmm. So a lady went and drank five gallons of water in less than three minutes. Oh, and immediately after, she had kidney failures and almost lost her life. Wow. Now, water is good for you. But your kidneys were not designed to take five gallons of water in less than three minutes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we must take those things that God gave us in moderation. Right? Too much grape juice could get you drunk. It happened before. It's in the Bible. You can see it. And it's grape juice. But too much of it can ferment in the stomach, settle in for alcohol, and can get you intoxicated. Oh, by the way, there's something else that gets you drunk that most people don't know, but if the police stops you after you have it, you might be surprised that it actually did that for you. Do you know what that is? It's dairy-based ice cream. The sugar and the dairy combined in your stomach will create enough alcohol in your bloodstream to you to be positive if the police were to stop. That's true. That is absolutely true. You can ask a policeman uh, and they will let you know that is absolutely true. And so God does not want those things for you. I will speak about what Sister White, uh, Sister mentioned about the sugar for a moment and, and reveal to you some amazing studies from Israel that has been done on this, clinical studies, but I will finish first. If you look at a newspaper ad, you see that they advertise all of these things for you. But the Lord said, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. good. Not everything that is advertised is for your consumption. There are things that are wholly unfit for the human body to partake of. And you have to make a choice. Isn't that wonderful? That God loves us enough to give us choices. And so as we look at these things, God wants you to choose for what is best for you. Because He has given you that beautiful rose of your health. I can tell you, I can emphasize one thing. If one thing I have learned over my years, I'm 41 today. So I'm fairly young compared to, to you guys here. I should be sitting down and listening and learning from you. But I've been given the opportunity to be here, and I take that gracefully. But one thing I've learned is that you can have money, you can have pleasure, you can have influence. But if you don't have health, it means nothing. It means nothing. Friends, I'd rather be a beggar and eat my meal at peace with the Lord and my family, and be a king. Amen. And not be able to...
to have good health that the Lord wants to give you. So my friends, this is why this message is so powerful. Because it is the true root of happiness that God wants you to have. Amen. And it is not in rocket science. It's the simple things that God has created for us. Okay. I'm going to fly through this area. There's a lot of definition, a lot of uh, overall biology, anatomy, physiology. I'm not going to have the time to go over this because I'm just going to give you a broad spectrum of the area. Of course, you can read and learn more about this. But when you look at your labels, by law, the labels are supposed to give you a nutritional fact of what you are eating. However, by law, also, there are certain things that they can put in the label per serving that they will never disclose in the label. Okay? So when you look at it in the label, you want to be sure that you're reading your labels for carbohydrates, proteins, fats, fiber, and water. We're going to break that down a little bit and see what it is. One of the things that I want you to understand is that there are certain things in how men package things that you should absolutely avoid. Okay? And that is, when you have highly processed food, it's not in the form that God intended it to be. And so we want to limit this category, this yellow category, to the best thing possible. And so, when you start reading, you start paying attention to the servings, how many servings do you get, not just to the number of calories, because I can show you very low calories, but... If it has a small amount of servings, that's good. If it has a high amount of serving, that's bad. Because now it's just divided amongst those servings. Does that make sense? It's per serving that they're giving you this breakdown. You want to make sure, friends, that the amount of sugar that you are getting is not high. That it is as low as you can get it for the food that you're going to take. You have to make good choices there. And best choice is to make your own food, not to buy packaged food. Mm -hmm. But if you must, try to get the sugars as low as possible. After that, you want to take a look at the amount of protein plus carbohydrates that you're going to get. And also pay attention to your sodium. Mm -hmm. Salt. What is salt that you're getting? You want to have those things within range of something that is not exuberant. This up here is called the daily value. Daily value is calculated based on a diet of 2,000 calories per day for an average individual of 150 pounds. So when you look at this, this gives you an idea of what the percentage of that serving is for that individual of 150 pounds. So if you see something that is 100% serving here for that size, well, you have to start thinking, do I want to eat 100% of my serving of this? If not, you're eating too much of it. So start thinking about that and making good choices. Avoid the terrible four. I'm going to fly through this because I need to finish. High fructose corn syrup. What it does is that it turns off a certain uh, hormone that you have and it will for sure result in overeating. If you have ingredients of high fructose corn syrup. Trans fats. We have saturated fats, we have non-saturated fat, and we have trans fats. Which of those three are not natural? Completely not natural, completely man made. Do you guys know? Trans fat. Saturated fats are fats that you find that are solid at room temperature. Non-saturated fat are those that are not solid, or they're liquid at room temperature. Trans fat is a invention of men so that your food will last longer in the shell. In every single cell that adheres to a trans fat molecule dies. It's that simple. It breaks habit in your body like you have no idea. This is why I was telling you that it's important for you to not eat packaged food. Why? Because by law, if the amount of trans fat is less that half a gram, that's 500 milligrams, per serving, they do not have to put it on the label. <clears throat> so that means that you can be having your chips and wonder why the bacteria can't eat it. And it lasts so long on the shelf. Well, that's because it has secret ingredients. 
to make it last longer on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And those secret ingredients will kill you. So it's better for you to do your own. You can have tortilla and dehydrate it or put it in the oven and toast it. You can have your own. Do the best you can to not partake of those things as much as you can. Now, friends, if you come to church and there is nothing less but beans and haystack, do the best choice you have, and by all means, use the best you have. But I'm talking about your daily intake of food. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Make the best choices that you can. Okay, real quick, the next. Any artificial color. <sighs> if I had enough time to tell you about artificial colors. Red artificial color was put back from the market because it literally creates cancer. Straight up. Straight up. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is a process at the cellular level called ATP. This is the process by which cells break down food or the fuel so that your, every part of your body can function. And I believe it was blue that inhibited in clinical studies the ATP process. So anything that has blue in it for an artificial color would inhibit your ATP process, which means that it will translate to fatigue and other diseases where your cells are not able to regenerate enough energy. Parkinson, Alzheimer's, etc. Friends, these things should never, never be in your food. <coughs> Excuse me. Artificial sugars, which are the list here, should never be part of your food. If you want to sweeten something, put a little bit of honey. But don't use this artificial sugar because they're not good for you. God never created them. They're man's invention. And I want you to think about something. Your God is made out of mainly what? Bacteria, right? That's what breaks down the food in your gut. You have millions and millions of uh, bacteria in your gut. If the bacteria outside cannot break down the food, and so it lasts yeah. longer in the show. What happens to the bacteria in your guts? <laughs> the same thing. Can't break down the food either. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. And so most of it goes by the wayside. And you start wondering why you're not getting enough nutrition, why your cells cannot replenish, why you're not able to reproduce you know, the things that you need to, to repair, because you're not feeding your body right. And so if you don't have the right food, you don't have the right repair process. A simple saying, garbage in, garbage out. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I don't have enough time for this. This is a fascinating study of all the amino acids, what's called micronutrients and micronutrients. There are difference between the two. Uh, amazing study uh, that you can look at and see the things that are there. I'll say a word for soybeans. If your soybean is not GMO, I'm sorry, if your soybean is not non-GMO and organic, please don't eat it. It's about the most poisonous thing that you can eat. But if it is organic and non-GMO, then you can have it, and it's a blessing, okay? But if it is not, be careful. So anything that has soy as an ingredient and the label does not say non-GMO organic is poison for you. Just because it says soy is not good for you. Please stay away. I know there's a lot of confusion with this. I believe that soy and quinoa has been one of those grains that God has given us for a blessing for us. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, I already kind of went through this, the essentials and non-essentials. Fascinating study. I just don't have enough time uh, to get in there. In the vitamin world, the things that are soluble and non-soluble, and the most important thing in your role for your vitamins when you're taking it, especially in this area, you want to be concerned about your vitamin B12, and you want to be concerned about your vitamin D3. If you're, if you're experiencing SAD um, during the uh, winter months, especially for ladies, then you want to make sure that you're having enough D3 coming in into your body. Because even if you strip yourself naked in the middle of the day, you're not going to make enough vitamin D. Okay, so you need to have a supplementation form. The one that I recommend is one that is suspended in MCT oil, which comes from coconut, or olive oil, and that is liquid. It's the best and most absorbed one for D3. Average of about 5,000 IUs a day would be recommendable. For every 10,000 IUs, you increase one point in your blood. 
and your blood should be at about 80, not about 40. The overall recommendation is about 40, and if you do the lab, it'll say it's okay. But you want to be somewhere between 60 and 80, not about 40. Okay? Is the so, brand pardon? What's the brand of that? Uh, it's not a particular brand that I buy, but just that it's, it's suspended in MCT oil. That's from coconut or olive oil. It's one of the two. It's D3. Okay? The other one is B12. If you're gardening from your garden, you get enough B12. If you're swallowing the saliva in the morning after you're woken up, you're having enough B12. But if you're not doing either of those, you need to supplement enough B12. Thank you. Appreciate that. A word for those who have carpet, it's inevitable for me. Every time I come in a room that has carpets, my nose starts to run. There's a lot of dust and things that accumulate in carpets. All of my homes that I've ever been to, we rip all the carpets. If you have carpets, they harm, they're harmful for your health. Um, anyway, something for you to keep in mind. Okay, very good. Moving on, so I need to finish. When it comes to water, you want to make sure that your water is as pure as possible. Well water, you should be aware of. If your water is hard water, which means you have enough calcium, you could end up having kidney stones or a flare-up of arthritis. There's no rocket science to this, friends. If you're having a mineral intake in your water source, just because it came from the well doesn't mean it's good for you. Does that make sense? Make sure your water is filtered. Your water being filtered, these are the three best ways of filtering water, steam to steel being at the top. That's what we use most of the time in the sanitariums. Reverse osmosis is the most common one. I use that at home or charcoal filter or a combination of the two. Please make sure that you are cognizant of what you have in your water so that you're not taking those things in your body that is harmful. Okay? All right. I don't think we have time for Q&A, <laughs> so I'm really sorry. I think we need to stop. Um, where is Sister Wen? Oh, there she is. Okay, uh, so Sister Wen, it's up to you. Should we, do we get five minutes for Q&A or no time at all? What is five what? minutes for Q&A. Yeah. Five minutes for Q&A. I'm looking at the time. So I'll give you five minutes for Q&A. Is there any questions or anything I've reviewed or any thoughts that you have that you have for me? I know I shared a lot, but that, yes. Yeah. A lot of the carbon filters mm -hmm. happen to have Fluoride pressed into it. Mm. Really? Mm. Yes, fluoride like asbestos uh, is on its way out. Supreme Court already ruled out that fluoride is not fit for human consumption. Good. Okay? And it is in its way out. It has not come in yet because the medical industry, especially the dentistry industry, makes tons of money on it. Mm -hmm. But fluoride should not be consumed. Try your very best, by God's grace, to have your water. Uh, with the best filters. The ones that we use are reverse osmosis and the uh, charcoal filters are a just half charcoal, just <coughs> micrometer char charcoal filters, and they work well. Any other thoughts? You had a question? Yeah. Do you share those slides? or? I'm happy to share your slides. Send me an email and I'll send it to you. Not a problem. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. I was just wondering what your thought is on using oil. You know, a lot of people say oil is very processed. Very good question. Very good question. Are they all the same or are there ones that we need to be aware of? Very good question. Well, in between red, green, and, and yellow, where would oil be placed? Red. Red. What do you think? Red. Orange. No. Orange? <laughs> I like that. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Okay. In between those three, oil should be definitely placed in red. It's highly processed. Now, there are some oils, like for instance, the olive oil, which is cold press, okay? That will be the equivalent of you having, I guess, olive juice, <laughs> very concentrated. But nonetheless, it's concentrated. And so, the way that we recommend it is, for instance, if you were to, you are browning cookies, and you wanted to put some oil on the pan so the cookies don't stick, or you may use it that way. But not make the oil part of your main food because, once again, the oil as eaten in the olives are beneficial for you. That's the word of the Lord. Okay? By the way, how many olives does it take to make one tablespoon of oil? A 
Anybody? 400. 400. 400. So if I give you $400 and you can eat it, it's great. If you don't, well, you're taking a little bit too much. And so it's good for us to use those things. In the Bible, all olive oil was priced as a commodity. They were not just pouring oil like nobody's business in there. Believe me. It was used very sporadically, very simply for you to be able to do that. So I know some folks, for instance, that say, you know, I must have some oil in my bread. You know, I let them make that choice with the Lord. My wife, I learned how to make bread without oil. And as much as we can, we try not to have those things are highly processed. Because we won't have them in the end. Uh, right? And so we need to learn to make the best choices that we can now. To be able to use. Now, olive oil is also very curative. Okay, and you can use it externally and sometimes internally if you know what you're doing. I think that my lady here had a hair, and then we'll go to you, Sister Wynn. I read that any oil in your diet um, is not good because it coats your stomach and doesn't allow your food to be digested properly. Coats your food. Uh, <clears throat> well, it's not that it coats your stomach. Your stomach is already coated. It has a mucose layer, and then the mucose layer protects you from the from the chloric acid. But what it does do is that it coats the food so that when the food arrives to the small intestine, especially vegetables, they must putrefy. Because the process by which the bacteria breaks down the oil is much lower by the process by which the vegetable inside the oil breaks down. Therefore, uh, some <coughs> people have decided that they will put as a dressing olive oil to their vegetables. That's a very bad idea. Um, and then they said, well, to allow the oil to break further, we will mix it with lemon. Okay, so it breaks down the oil faster and allows you to do that. I still think that's a good idea. You know what I do with my vegetables? I wash them in cold water before I take them. And when you do that, the water in the vegetable overall revives the vegetable. The, the cells are rehydrated. And when you take them in, you don't need to put anything else. You can do a dressing that is made out of cashews and all the things if you want, but try to stay as natural as you can, uh, you know, so that God can bless you there as much as possible. Yes, Sister Wynn. Yeah, I only use the oil on my pants. There you go. But uh, I wanted you to explain, that was why I raised my hand, sure. what it does to the sails, how they clump together. Right, so this is a, I, we don't have time for this, but I'll show you what happens. If I show you your arteries, now, what is the difference between arteries and veins? It's not a trick question. What is the difference? Yes, but there's a physiological difference between arteries and veins. Arteries don't have something that veins have. What is that? No, they all have oxygen. So oxygen must be in your, in your red blood cells or lest you die. But physically, physiologically, veins have check valves. Arteries don't, okay? Arteries are away from the heart and the, the blood flows freely down to the extremities. But when the blood is coming up, every time you press on your foot, you have a pump and it pushes the blood upwards. Now, if the veins didn't have a check valve, it will flow right back again. So every so often there is a check valve. Have you heard of varicose veins? Yes. All there is, is that the check valve is malfunctioning in that little space and it has become quadrilateral. Okay? Exactly. Thank you. So the point of the, the, of the point of this is quite simple. When you start putting oil in your diet, you have to, you begin, it begins to accumulate in the endophilia lining of your cells and it begins to clump together. Okay? So all clumps are there and they're happy because they're, they're lodged there. Okay? They're happy. But one day you say, you know what? I want to do vigorous exercise today. And so without any warm up, you get in the treadmill, you start giving it you all, and all of a sudden your blood pressure goes from 80 to 120, right? Blood flow is increasing. You know what happens to that, to that clog? It moves. And as it moves, it begins to travel. Now my friends, if that clog ends up in your heart, we call that a heart attack. If that clog ends up in your brain, we call it an aneurysm or a stroke. Okay. It's that simple. So what do we do? 
We don't introduce things that clog up our cardiovascular system. Okay? It's just that simple, friends. And you know what is sad? We have this light for more than 150 years. Mm -hmm. And it took Dr. Elstein's and, and Dr. Um, um, Campbell, Colin Campbell, Campbell mm -hmm. to write the China study to That's reveal true. to the world what we had 150 years ago. So friends, we must follow what God says is best for us. Yeah. In whatever condition you're in, care for that rose as your health. Amen. Don't do anything that would endanger it. Wow. Stress is one of those things that can kill you. I don't have enough time to talk about that, but anyway. We have one minute left. Any quick questions? Yes, ma'am. Coconut oil. Can you tell me something about it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh boy, we get into this question of, uh, yes. Coconut oil is no different than olive oil. It is a highly processed uh, item. I use it prolifically as an external uh, applicable oil that you can use. Internally, no. I would not use it. Uh, it was not best for you. I, I tell you that uh, this conversation always comes up when we talk about oils because you know, the research and everything else out there and what people tell you, oh, olive oil and what it does and this and that and so on and so forth. Friends, it's important for us to realize that what we take in our bodies becomes part of us. If you can do your food as healthy as possible, please do it. Uh, and don't use those things that are not good for you. Now, coconut oil does wonders if you apply it to the skin. Uh, the epidermis layer of the skin, which is the top layer of the skin, is renewed every three months. And in that process of being renewed every three months, you can help that process by creating the keratin that actually rebuilds the cell faster by putting coconut oil on it. It is amazing for that. Now, just to the fact of what she was talking about, <clears throat> about sugar, and I'll finish with this. In Israel, the clinical studies were done with Hanukkah honey. Okay? If you don't have Hanukkah honey, Manuka sugar, Manuka honey, or sugar will do as well. But the one by excellence that I try to use is honey, unprocessed honey, raw honey. And in the clinical studies, if you were to look at the pictures, the one was raw all the way down to the bone. The grossness has settled in. Uh, the flesh was dead all the way down to the bone. And as they applied honey, <clears throat> and removed it, and applied it, and removed it every day, the whole wound rebuilt all the way up completely. Mm -hmm. Honey is an amazing tool that God has given us, mm -hmm. okay, for what God has done there. Now, sugar, white sugar, you can use to stop bleeding almost instantly. And it does not hurt like cayenne. Cayenne hurts, and it stinks, but sugar, but sugar doesn't. And it's easy to use if you have some available. Okay, so it's a use that God has given us for that there. Do I recommend it for you to take an eternity? No, because it will, it, will, it will pretty much kill you eventually. Every teaspoon of sugar that you intake, I don't care what form it is, decreases for the next 12 hours, 25% of your immune system. Every teaspoon of sugar that you take for the next 12 hours decreases by 25%. So do the math. If you eat more, you have no immune system. And by the way, our sister here said it takes 15 years to create cancer. I would, I would suggest that it takes 15 years for you to re see the physical result of cancer in your body. If you were to study it physiologically, every day you produce 15,000 cancer cells. Those are called free radicals. And it is the job of your immune system to eliminate it every single day. Mm. So if you have a compromised immune system, you're just propping yourself up for trouble. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. May God bless you. And as you look at that beautiful rose, either keep it and remember or pass it to somebody else. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Pedro. That was awesome. Uh, did you learn a lot? Yes. I did too. Mm -hmm. uh, quite interesting he talked about apples and angelica kraus 
uh, at the Newport Church wants everyone to know that honey crisp apples, you can get a box of them by calling 509-435-3435. Linda? Well, she said originally $20 and then she changed it to $15. Oh, well, thank you. I thought it was $15. <laughs> okay, it's $15. So, They're honey crisp, and you can get them today, tomorrow, anytime this week. Isn't that wonderful? He just talked about apples, and apple a day keeps the doc doctor away. I'm going on a glean tomorrow. Can we have the number again? Yes. I'm going on a glean tomorrow for gamma apples, but you have to pay $20, and that's worth it to me. You could pick them as many banana boxes as you want, right, Gwen? I don't know. Ah, uh, yes, I verified that with James. <laughs> you have to be in the gleaners. No, but you can pay $20 for the whole year, and it's only one, one more glean. And is it worth it to get four banana boxes worth of apples for the whole winter? I think so. So if you want to come, bring your $20 to pay for the whole year. Mm -hmm. If we have another glean, fine. If we don't, you steal. You, we're meeting at Safeway tomorrow at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> okay, but an apple a day really does keep the doctor away. And I want to tell you one more thing. He talked a lot about Brother Pedro digestion. When we had our lifestyle center, I don't care what anybody for four and a half years, people came, we said we weren't going to take cancer. Most of the people that came had cancer, and they were Seventh-day Adventists. I've never seen this in my life. But one thing that I want to share with you, everybody that came had a problem with digestion. They couldn't eat this or they couldn't eat that. And so you know what I gave them? And some people may disagree with this, but I gave them salads. Salad in the morning, salad in the evening. And I had eggplant bacon. And I remember this husband's wife, he came, he sat down at the table, he was there because of his wife, and he almost ate all the bacon. I had to tell him, no, save some for the clients. <laughs> it was just eggplant bacon. It was sliced real thin and I seized it to smoke this and smoke that. Put it in the dehydrator and it came out tasting like bacon. It's the, the recipe's right there in the manual. You, you don't have to buy it to get it. Okay, but I wanted to tell you that because it's very important to, to guard the digestion. And how do you guard the digestion? By not eating in between meals. And you can do it. My husband used to have a problem with eating in between meals because his mom ate between meals. And I guess his dad ate between meals. And, you know, it's like a family tradition. We just pick, pick, pick. No, don't drink with your meals and don't eat late. If you just do those things. And, of course, you don't eat fruits and vegetables together. But that's how you guard your digestion, so that it keeps working. Because when your digestion breaks down, guess what? You're on your way out. You can't process food anymore. You need food to live. And the more good food you put in there, the better off you're going to be. I have to acknowledge someone, and she doesn't know I'm going to do this, but she's 91 years old going on 92, and she's a medical missionary. Can you believe that? And she drives her own self here. Amen. And she comes to almost every meeting. Teresa, stand up. And you she think is. I can? <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't walk with a cane. She doesn't wear glasses. She doesn't walk with a walker. And she's had a hip replacement recently. And just recently, I think that was a fun You fail, right? And and most most ladies most. Older people her age that have a fall like that, where would they be? Bed. In the bed, the nursing home, or six feet under. And she's still here. I want to thank you for your support, Teresa, and for being such an example to all of us. Okay, so just a few more things, announcements. Uh, I did tell you about, I did. I mentioned it briefly. Um, 
MM Health Line, which is Raina, Rowena Parker, who I used to know in New York many years ago, have asked me uh, if I would please do another medical missionary training. And I told her on the line, we did one last year, there were 450 people on the line every single night, every single Honey day. But I said no. If people haven't gotten it yet with the medical missionary work, but I will do a preparation for final crisis. So those of you who have phone numbers, I have your, I will text you the flyer. I just got it while I was here, the final edition. It will be November 9th to no, November 13th. Dr. Conrad Vine is starting it off with preparation for the final crisis. Lisa Newhart is after him, same day on Wednesday. She's speaking about righteousness by faith. A lot of us do not understand what that means. In a nutshell, without him, I can do nothing. But what? With him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. It's being on fire for the Lord. It's giving your whole heart to his work and to him. Anything else is, you know what it is? Laodicea. And it makes God sick to his stomach. He hates us halfway Christian. And you know what? I don't like him either. <laughs> because, you know, I come in this church and I see all this light and truth and amazing information. I grab hold onto it and keep going. And then it's like, come on, brothers, come on, sisters. We gotta finish this work, right? So the, the greatest trial is with those who have been Adventists for years. Right. Those who come in later and never heard of Seventh-day Adventists, they're on fire. They never heard of such good stuff. So let's not be sleepy virgins. Let's not be lazy medical missionaries. Let's get on the ball. Like I said, and I stand by it, we only have one more this year. Who knows? The, the, if, if you keep, keep watching what's going on, this world is falling apart. The country's falling apart in every way. We don't have to list it. So I really appreciate these. Uh, this makes it really graphic. I grew up on a bologna sandwich. Every day, a snicker and a bag of potato chips. I would be craving these things. <laughs> I would have to. What'd you say, Brother Kendra? That was the meal back then. That was the meal back then. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's all I ate. I didn't know any better. Miracle whip mayonnaise. Miracle whip. Absolutely. That. But you know what? There's potato salad back there, and it's made with almond days. Ooh. My own almond days. <laughs> you can make cashew mayonnaise, you can make, uh, but it's potato salad. I always had to have potato salad with eggs in it. You know, Reader's Digest said, feed your husband an egg a day and you'll kill him. So if you want to get rid of your husband, feed him an egg a day. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's what he just explained to us with the cholesterol, isn't it? So, brothers and sisters, let's, um, I'm going to ask Brother Russ. Russ, he said, elder in the church? Come, Brother Russ, and have prayer when, yes. I'm going to pass these out. Um, oh, yes. I'm going to pass these out. Um, what I did Could was... Could you come up here, please, Gwen, because uh, she asked me about this later, I mean, earlier, and I told her she could share this. And we do have a few announcements. The food is out and it's hot, so... The way the food is set up, you can go and get bread and spread and not bother anybody going through the line. You can get salad and come back, put it on your table, or soup, okay? So that's how we're going to do it. Go, everybody go at your own pace as soon as he prays. Yes, Gwen. Only take Here. one for my family because... Mike, please. <laughs> only take one per family because I only printed 20. I didn't expect this many people. So um, what it is, is I ordered fermentation pads made um, from a gal. Her first name is Marlena. Um, I, don't, I can't pronounce her last name. Gellison. Anyway. What is it? Gellison. I well, no, Gellison. Dana oh. Gellison is, oh, okay. or Gazelton is her friend. But um, Marlena and her husband 
they run a business. They're in Alabama. They're at um, Uchi Pines. And um, it's called Dryland Sewing. Anyway, um, she made these um, fomentation pads and um, wool, wool blankets to go around them. Uh, I just wanted you guys to have the chance to see them, touch them, see if it's what you want rather than making your own or, you know, if you can't get them done here. Um, I am not a sewer, so this was like a gold mine to me. Um, what you'll see in this bag cost me $320, and it was worth it to me. So, anyway, here's the information. It gives you, um, I think, everything that you'll need to be able to get them if you want. Okay. She also makes um, Russian steam tents and Russian steam tents and oh, like feminine napkin type of stuff, so that when we get to that point where we can't get any disposable stuff, we'll have stuff we can use. So anyway. Okay, so I'll just kind of show you, and you guys can come up and see. Okay, have you one and I'll give it the support number. Okay, so this is her her spine, her back one, and she makes a um, a wool cover to go over it after it's heated. I ordered, and these are the specific ones I ordered. The um, she makes a whole lot more varieties than this. This is a black sand spine. Um, I can't fomentation. And here's the neck, a male and a female, or a larger neck, smaller neck. And they're, um, they have the, the um, padding on the inside and their Velcro. I ordered three, um, well, like fomentation pads to um, for the stomach, the chest, or a smaller person, mm -hmm. a spine for a smaller person. So I have three of those because you would switch it three times. Mm -hmm. And then I would just use the, I only ordered one of the wool covers because I would use the same wool cover each time for each one that I did. Mm -hmm. And it can, it can accumulate Thank pretty fast. Um, here's a sinus one made with the black sand. Mm. You can get these in different sizes. And she did a phenomenal job of sewing these. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a large man's um, spinal one. Pretty sure that's what that is, and a wool cover to go over that. So you guys are welcome to come up and look and, and touch and feel and see um, what you think of it. Like I said, this was $320, and that included shipping. Um, they were very professional, very fast. Um, I called the number, gave, told her what I wanted. She made out a list. Um, and they and I put on that um, sheet the different ways that they can take payments. It was so so simple. Three hundred twenty. Three hundred twenty dollars for these. And what's the what's the name of them again? That okay. makes these. Well, her Sometimes name is Marlena. Marlena. And if you look up, and it's all in this paper. <coughs> It's all in this paper. If you go to oh, okay. Closure for Jesus, you will see in her, you click on her YouTube channel. Um, all of her YouTube um, episodes will come up. Look for the ones that have um, anything to do with fomentations, um, Russian steam tent, um, that kind of stuff. You'll see, you'll see Marlena. Okay. Um, and, um, you and she'll go through she goes through in those interviews and she shows all of her uh, wares all of the things that she makes she's really quite amazing sorry I didn't. okay you we can talk you can talk to her about that after we're going to close now this is the latest we've gone it's actually 2 30. i just want to repeat that you can go to the line you don't have to stand in line and wait to the person in front go up and get your salad there's a lettuce and the potato salad and make sure you get a moderate amount so the people behind you can get some and there's dishes there and there's soups and beans so there's quite a variety um, I just wanted some of you really love this book 
Remember when uh, we were having a class before pandemic busters? Yes. It was being sold for $20. I'm selling it today only for $10. So if you want to get a copy, just go to the table there and I'll help you and give you the medical missionary prices. Don't forget to glean tomorrow, but you can pick up the Honeycrisp anytime this week. And we'll talk later about the rest of the announcements. Brother Russ? Let's stand for prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we do want to be more like you. Amen. We pray, Lord, that what we learn today will we'll be able to put in practice and share with others and that they will learn about you. We thank you for the food that we're about to eat. Amen. Nourish us, strengthen us with it. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.